In this video, I'm going to share a quick CSS tip on how to align items inside Flexbox containers. It's going to be particularly useful if you have all of the items at the top of the container and you need to put just one item at the bottom, or if you have, let's say, all items on the left side of the container and you need to put just one item on the right side. So stay tuned and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, so this is an example website that I built for one of the previous videos and I ended it saying that I don't like how CTAs are not aligned at the bottom. So this is a very common pattern in web design. Usually layouts like this are not something that you're going for and most of the time you would want buttons to be aligned at the bottom. But before I show you how to do this, let me show you the starting point. Let me show you the markup and styles that we have here. So in terms of the markup, it's pretty straightforward. We have an ordered list of cards and each card contains an image, a heading, description, price, and a call to action. In terms of styles, I'm also not doing anything super fancy here. I'm just using BEM defining one block for each card that's called card and styling each elements inside like so. So we have styles for image, for the title, for the description, for the price, for the CTA, and for the spaces between the elements in the card, I'm using a so-called lobotomized owl technique, which uh, comes from like this notation. It looks like an owl with a thing here. Um, and what it means basically is uh, that every element inside this container will have a top margin except for the first one. So in this case, this image will not have um, a top margin. And it's useful because you can uh, set spaces between the elements without worrying about uh, resetting the, the, the margin for the last child uh, or the first child. And it's very compact, easily one of my favorite things uh, to do in CSS. For the grid itself, a simple list with uh, list style none, padding left set to zero to reset the agent style sheet. And then when we hit 768 pixels breakpoint, we just define a grid with a gap and set the layout to three columns. And it all looks fine on small screens because cards go one after another. And even if they are different height, it looks normal because there is no extra space. But as soon as we get to a larger screen, cards become a grid. And because it's a grid, they are the same height. There's this extra space at the bottom of the cards because each card uses normal flow, meaning that uh, all of the elements inside are just block elements and they just stack one after another. Yes, there is space between them thanks to that uh, lobotomized owl technique, but we still have these buttons that are not aligned. So how do we fix this? There is a very cool technique with Flexbox and Margin Auto that I wanna show you. So the first thing we want to do is change the normal flow inside cards to Flexbox. So let me go back here and define it inside the card component. So the first thing we need to do is add display flex to the card block. And it's going to break the layout because flex has a uh, flex direction row set by default. So we need to change that to column. And the next thing we want to do is find the CTA. I actually have CTA is the button itself and the element that we need to adjust is called card CTA wrap. So we're going to add that here and add margin block start to auto. And that's going to align the buttons. And what's cool about this approach is that you don't necessarily uh, need to use that uh, margin block start auto on the very last element, you can actually use it on any other element. So in our case, I don't like, yeah, I see that the call to actions are now aligned, but the prices for each donut are still kind of misaligned and it does create a visual imbalance. So instead of applying this rule to the call to action wrap, I'm going to do that for the price. So I'm going to do it like so. And it looks almost exactly like I want it to look. Um, the only problem I see is that the space between 
the paragraph here and the price for the donut is very small. And remember, we used that lobotomized owl technique to set top margin for each element. And here we're setting it to auto. And because there's like auto is just like automatic, like there's no minimum. So in cases like this, when I need to align one of the items on one side of the container, I usually use gap instead of that lobotomized owl technique. So let's go back to code pen. Okay, so remember how we have this class here that defines this vertical rhythm between the elements. I'm going to delete it from every card. And what that will do is uh, remove the space between the elements altogether. So if I save this and refresh the page, you'll see how there's no space at all. And instead of using that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the card and where I say display flex, flex direction column, I'm going to add another declaration saying row gap and I'm going to use the same uh, value. I think it was minus two that looked nice. I'm going to save that and refresh the page. And yeah, so now the prices are aligned, now the buttons are aligned, and we don't have this issue with missing space between the paragraph and the price. And if I open the inspector and enable this flex visualization, you'll see that we have gaps between the elements. And if I inspect, let's say the first card, we'll notice that the price has margin auto that pushes it to the bottom of the container. And now it's all visually aligned and just how I like it. So there you have it. Now you know this technique for aligning elements inside Flexbox containers using margin auto. If you knew it already, share the video so other engineers can learn it. Or if you learned it today, um, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I have more videos like this coming in the future and I hope you have a great day. See you soon.